Jason Davis, Jared Dubois, The Best Soccer Show, joined, happy to be joined by Portland Timbers owner Merritt Paulson on the line with us now. How are you, Merritt? A little bit under the weather today, guys, but very happy to talk to you. Uh, game today, uh, first preseason game of 2013. How'd it go? How'd you guys look? You know, we were undefe- we have been undefeated, I think, in, in every preseason game we've had um, since our entry into Major League Soccer, so I draw no conclusions <laughs> from anything that happens in, 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 in preseason. That said... Uh, you know, we, the result was good. We we beat Colorado three to one, but I was more impressed with with how the team's implementing the system of our new coach Caleb Porter. Um, watching how guys were linking up and and pressuring high and and um, you know putting some some complicated things together in a fairly short order of time, uh, especially when you consider that you know almost a third of our team is new. We had a pretty active off season, so I you know I was pleased. Yeah, I gotta say, I got to watch some of the early part of it, and right from the very first minute of the game, I think there was a move that was really impressive and kind of made me think, well, if this, if this is the way that Caleb Porter's going to go, I'm going to be pretty entertained this season, and I, I think, for the most part, your team looked to have an identity already. Is that something you're really pleased with and something that uh, you were expecting from Caleb Porter this early? Yeah, you know, and, and I, I'll be frank, and I'll, I'll say what Caleb didn't say in his press conferences. I think one of the things we've lacked in our first two seasons in MLS is an identity, and we were a reactive team that that adjusted um, to whoever we were playing. And um, you know, and obviously you always always make adjustments to, to to the opponent and home and away. But it was more of a of a sort of complete transformation instead of a of a tweak. And and an identity is something that that. You know, Caleb wants to bring to the table for us, and he's got a very clear idea of of what that is. And uh, the good teams around the league, you know, have an identity um, and and have had an identity and and, and, and stick to that. And so, um, you know, look, it's uh, it's very early, and and we got to give this thing plenty of time to 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 play out. But uh, we've got a lo- lot of good pieces on this team and uh, some exciting players and. Uh, I do think, you know, I, I think we need to be a little more cautious with making grand proclamations about our expectations. We still have those expectations internally, but when you make them publicly, I'm not always sure that, that, that you know, that's the best thing. Um, that said, you made a comment about, you know, being an entertaining team, and I, I very much am comfortable saying, you know, this season, you know, win, lose, or draw, I, I expect the Timbers to be one of the most entertaining teams to watch in the league if a, if a casual MLS fan is turning on a game you know I'd want him or her to say okay it's the Timbers this is a game I want to watch this isn't going to be you know just you know glorified rugby or whatever <laughs> you know our league gets accused of you know sort of at its worst I mean this is this is entertaining football you know, if you'll, if you'll forgive, the, forgive me saying this, I would say that you as an owner from the outside, when it compared to other owners, I think some of the words I would use to describe you are uh, modern, aggressive, and young. And I think that your team right now, including the coach and the stable of players that you guys have brought in, kind of also embrace those same, uh, those same kind of a- adjectives. Would you say that's something that's done on pur- purpose by Portland, or is it just a natural reflection of how you, how you view, the, view the team? Well, you know, I've never, I, I don't have the kind of hubris where I've said I need the team to be a reflection of me in any way, shape, or form. In fact, I'm such a bad soccer player, that would be a bad thing, you know, in a literal sense. But, no, I mean, in terms of, of you know, laying a philosophy out and, you know, wanting to play an entertaining style of soccer and, um, you know, I, I think an athletic uh, an athletic team, yeah, that's, that's definitely uh, – you know something that's that's in the blueprint, and you know that really was the blueprint from the get-go. But maybe you know something that that, that we didn't execute on, and and you know I'm just really pleased um, with with Caleb and what he brings to the table and the job that he's been doing and and how well he's been working together with our general manager. And again, I'm not expecting Rome to be built in a day here, but uh, I think we've got a lot of pieces in place right now, and you know it's exciting and and. Uh, uh, I'm really looking forward to see uh, to, to, to see what we can do. Mary, uh, the, speaking, you got a, a fresh start with a, a new coach, a guy that's that's uh, highly regarded coming out of college. It's 
it looks like uh, you know a new fun time in Portland. But can you talk a little about the the John Spencer experience and maybe what you what you learned out of that experience as a as a new owner in MLS? Well, you know, and I already I'm I'm guilty of doing what I uh, already in this interview what I said I you know we're trying not to do this year, which is spending too much time looking back. I think that <laughs> we've got a mantra right now of saying the past is the past. Those who lived it learned from it. Hopefully, a lot of guys you know aren't here anymore, players, etc. Um, you know, and, and and the ones that were here, um, you know, hopefully they've they, they've learned from from that and continue to build. But John did a lot of great things and. You know, I think that when when we came into this league, you know, with our fans and um, you know the atmosphere here, you know, he's a larger than life personality, and uh, and you know, in, in in terms of how he was received by the local and national media, and um, you know, his infectious personality, he was he, he, a lot a lot of things that he did were were really terrific here, and you know, I'm not going to say a bad word um, about John Spencer, obviously. Um, we felt the need to move in a different direction, and that was a tremendously difficult, um, you know, experience for me. I, you know, it's something that that other team owners have, have certainly, you know, that's it's, it's not making a coaching move isn't isn't um, something that's a rarity in, in sports, and it's probably too common of a of a practice. But I'd always sort of believe that that people are too knee jerky in making um, coach changes, and that's not just in the soccer world, but across the, um, the spectrum of professional sports. But, uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, I'll stand by what we said at the time, which was there's a philosophical difference that I didn't think was going to change. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, we're looking forward now. You know, speaking of uh, looking forward, I, I know that uh, Judd Wellfield and uh, you yourself have been looking to maybe get into the, the, the running for a hex qualifier. And uh, just last week, it was announced that uh, Joe Winfield will get one of the Gold Cup uh, uh, games. Is this considered maybe a dry run at moving towards uh, getting a hex qualifier? And can you talk a little bit about the dialogue that kind of goes on with U.S. soccer when making the case for Joe Jill, Jill Winfield? Well, look, I, I think that I'm a big – I'll start – preface this by saying I'm, I'm a huge um, U.S. Uh, men's national team fan. I, I think that our stadium gives the team literally the best home field uh, advantage uh, of any venue in the, in the country. I'm obviously not objective. Um, but, uh, you know, that said, we're not going to get a, a qualifier because we won't put down sod uh, on top of the surface here. And, uh, you know, I think that soccer's you, uh, USSF has is, is, is put their stake in the ground on that one, that they have to have sod on an artificial surface. And, you know, we've got a unique artificial surface. Um, you know, in a perfect world, we'd have grass, and I'm not going to take the time to explain all the reasons why we can't in this facility um, right now. But but the bottom line is, you know, we put a $2 million e-layer under this, this surface we have, and we've customized it, and it's FIFA two-star rated and this, that, and the other thing. Um, even David Beckham, one of the most vocal critics of artificial surface, you know, every time that he played in gelled win, he complimented us on, on how this was this was different. But when you lay sod down and, and leave it on for a week, um, which is what soccer wanted to do, it's going to have um, – it, 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 it has a pretty negative impact on the long-term health of the – the surface um, and the need to replace it um, faster than than before, and it also hurts our sort of credibility um, as we as we talk about this thing actually being a a, a pretty good and safe surface. So we are going to get the Gold Cup game. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Hopefully, Jurgen, um, who I like a lot and you know was really helpful to me in our coach search process, um, we'll see that it's a unique surface. We've talked about it. Um, you know, if if in fact the U.S. men's team plays um, here for their Gold Cup game, and I would, if I were a betting man, I'd bet they do, um, but that hasn't been announced yet. Uh, but that's a long-winded answer to saying I don't think we're going to get the the hex qualifier um, this year, but we are getting the Gold Cup. I think it, they got a lot of people disappointed with that just because of the the, the potential atmosphere at, at Gelled Wen. Now, I got a question on the on the surface issue. Have you found it? I mean, you're the you're you're involved in and obviously involved in the personnel moves for the Timbers. Have you found any players who who maybe balk a little bit about coming to to Portland because of the surface? No, we haven't. And uh, you know, look, we have we have probably a top three practice facility in the league with with bar none the best natural grass field um, in the state of Oregon. One that that 
the field itself cost $2.5 million. Um, we've got great facilities for the guys. We also have an artificial surface at that same practice facility, but um, you know that's where the team trains most of the time. Players are well aware that this is, you know, not every artificial surf surface is the same, and that th this is the latest and greatest soccer-specific technology out there that's that's customized for soccer, not not American football. Um, meaning it's a little bit softer. Uh, and, uh, in, in more forgiving, uh, NFL players or college football players like a, like a harder surface on artificial. But, uh, no, we, we have not. Um, you know, and, and the guys in the league who make the most noise about it, again, you know, David Beckham was very outspoken against it. You know, we tried to get him to go on record and, to, you know, say publicly <laughs> what he said to us. Um, and, and he didn't want to do that, but uh, he got, he got you know, in trouble for that he, before. So. Yeah, he was he was very complimentary, and uh, even Thierry Henry, um, you know, said said it's it's a it's it's a good surface. So, you know, I think in the next several years, uh, as the technology continues to improve, and the, the studies are out there that show artificials just as safe as grass, you know, I, I think there's a real stigma that exists and I get why it exists around artificial and guys I'm not trying to be an apologist for artificial again you know if we were to a sunken bowl and we didn't have to have a college football games in the fall and a number of other things I can promise you we'd have natural here and I'm still not ruling out putting in uh, artificial lights and doing a bunch of things down the road if we can ever do natural but um, you know right now uh, I, I, I stand up for our surface, and you know it has not been a deterrent for us in player recruitment. Okay, this is complete. This is a complete coincidence, but I'm going to ask you about a player that had a knee injury uh, right after we talk about an artificial surface, which a lot of people think contributes. I, it, you know, I know you guys got the best of the best. Talk about Jose Valencia. I mean, it was kind of a, a rough start. He had a knee injury. He's been sitting out. Well, he, had, he had a knee injury before he came here. I realize that. It actually that. happened um, I uh, that. Uh, in Colombia playing in a game in the street, um, not not with his team, um, Santa Fe, um, at least we think. Um, and, and then when he came out here to do the physical, uh, he failed the physical, and we didn't actually sign him for last year. So anyway, keep, I didn't well, let you finish your question. I mean, I, you know, talk a little bit about that that process. How frustrating it was. You have a, a, a an exciting young player. You're going to have a young DP, one of the first in the league, come into to Portland. Uh, obviously, the Colombian connection is is very strong with MLS. And then he has the 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 injury. You have to deal with that issue for for a year. How how frustrating was that experience? And then what do you you know what what do you expect our expectations for him this year? Well, uh, that in. Several other things in 2012, uh, I would I would put in the frustrating bucket. <laughs> it was it was we had we had a lot of obstacles um, last year, and that was you know that was kind of how we kicked our season off. We were really excited about Trancedo and uh, with with good reason. Uh, and you know, look, that's you know he, just a brutal way for him uh, to start his tenure with us. And I think we we took great care of him. Um, you know, a lot of teams would have handled it differently than we handled it. We, we, we got him the best surgeons for a very, very unique type of surgery and a unique type of injury um, that he had uh, and, um, you know, really did a great job uh, getting that fixed and then, and then rehabbed him here, kept him here. Um, and, uh, you know, for a guy who's, who's not an English speaker, um, to be sort of on an island uh, like that uh, for, for a whole season, you know, that could be a tough test of, of a, a player's fortitude, mental fortitude, especially a guy who's like all of 21 years old. And, and you know, he's a champ, and he's got an infectious personality, and, and he did a great job working hard in his rehab, and then he worked really hard this off offseason uh, in doing training and getting his fitness up. And, look, he looked really good to me today. Um, uh, you know, I don't want to, again, get too worked up over a, a, a preseason game, but we were excited about him for a reason, and I think he's going to be a big part of our future. You know, Merritt, so much of the Pacific Northwest talking points right now center around the Cascadia Cup trademark. Uh, how much do you as an owner get to have input in these type of dealings, and is there anything you'd like the average Timbers or maybe even MLS fan know about your position on it? Well, <laughs> you guys are putting me on the spot on that one because I've sort of been asked not to comment publicly ah. on it. Um, you yeah, know, we got okay put in well. a tough position on that is, is all I will say. Um, and I understand the fans, fans' position and um, you know, I think it's going to be resolved amicably um, at the end of the day, and I think uh, I think supporters are going to be pleased. 
So that's all right. So so we've got a a, a promise from Mayor, Mayor Valson on the Cascadia Cup. It's it, it's been very difficult for uh, for us to approach it, Mayor, because we're we're outsiders. We're not Cascadia guys. I get it from the fans' perspective, like you were talking about. Um, I, you, I know you've already said that you don't want to look back, and this is just a little bit back. But the, there was some excitement over the potential of Mikel Discru coming to MLS but, and specifically playing for the Timbers. Um, have have is there anything that you can tell us about how that went down, and maybe in a general sense, what's it like trying? Trying to convince a player of of his age to, to jump from Europe to MLS at that point in his career. Well, um, you know, I, I'll probably be more candid than I should um, on, on this one, uh, just because you guys are catching me in that kind of mood today. But uh, <laughs> you know, he was interested in in, in coming here uh, because of a relationship with with Caleb, um, and they'd had a real good experience, um, despite not qualifying for right. the Olympics with 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 the U twenty threes. Um, and he definitely was a target. Uh, you know, we thought we had a deal done, um, and uh, and you know, some things changed at the eleventh hour, and ultimately we would have had to make him a DP. Um, and w- when it got to that point, uh, we said, look, you know, as long as we're talking about DPs, um, you know, here, here's a guy who's still very much a developmental pr- player in a project, albeit one that we're excited about in in mix. Um, you know, let's let's spend a lot more money than what we're talking about and go out and get a DP. You know, at the same position, um, you know, who's a lot more proven and we think we can have a you know a bigger impact um, out of the gate. And MLS also had a lot of issues with make and mix a DP as well. As you guys know, you know the signing process is is unique here, but we we tended to agree with them once once the numbers changed. Merritt Paulson, owner of the Portland Timbers, I, I, I appreciate you taking the time despite the fact you're, you're not feeling great today. And uh, congratulations on the preseason win that you don't want to get too, too excited about. Thanks, a lot, <laughs> Thanks guys. I appreciate it. Okay.